morning everyone welcome back to my channel and the weekly vlog so the weekly vlog has been on a bit of a hiatus is that the right word i think that's the right word um for the past two or three weeks really i don't feel like i've actually done one since mykonos i don't think i have and that's because when we got back from Mykonos, everything was really busy. It was Andy's birthday and we had loads to sort out for that because we had a little party here and the weather was gorgeous. And that was basically the start of the heat wave that weekend. And then we've basically had a bit of a heat wave here in the UK the past, I want to say this is definitely the third week, I think. Yeah, I think this is the third week now. And basically the day of Andy's birthday barbecue, I was really struggling because it was so hot and we were trying to cook food and it was intense heat. And then basically from that day forward, it's been the same ever since. And I know like the first week it was happening, they were saying like, oh, it's gonna be the same next week. And I was like, wow, I really don't know how I'm gonna survive this because I'm, I do like summer. I like it when the sun's out. I like it when it's dry and we can take the dogs out without getting really muddy and stuff. But I do not like intense heat. And that is basically what it's been like the past three weeks. And I've been really struggling with it, to be honest. I, I just haven't really known what to do with myself. A couple of days I had really bad hay fever as well, which if you suffer with hay fever, you'll know that it does kind of put a real dampener on summer. I need to dry my hair, by the way. I'm just like <laughs> letting it dry out a bit um, in the humidity at the moment. But yeah, basically I've just been really struggling with it. It is not my favorite kind of weather when it's it's been like 30 degrees every day, intense heat and humidity. It's felt really hard to do anything, like even getting dressed in the morning. I've just been looking at my wardrobe and just like, I can't face putting on any clothes. <laughs> And yeah, I've just basically felt like a bit of a hot mess every day really. And I've, I've certainly not felt like picking up the camera. So that's why um, there hasn't been a little vlog for a while. But I feel like quite a lot's been going on the past two or three weeks. Like we haven't really been doing a massive amount. There's been a lot of like time in the garden. Um, I don't really feel like we've had any major exciting plans and stuff. Um, I feel like I've been in a little bubble of the heat wave and also the World Cup. So one thing you may not already know about me is that I'm quite a big football fan. I, I used to go to the football with my dad every week religiously. Um, we're both Leighton Orient fans and I grew up in the East End of London and my dad's like supported them his whole life. He's even got a tattoo of them on his leg, like he's quite hardcore. So yeah, like ever since I've become a teenager, I feel like I've been really into football, but I guess the last probably five, 10 years, I've not been into it as much. Like I don't really go to matches and stuff anymore. And my husband's not really into football at all. But since the world, when the World Cup started, I was kind of like, well, I'll watch the England games, you know, I, I don't really, follow England I haven't been following England a massive amount the past few years really and I think like most people everyone's just kind of lost hope with it so I said to myself I watched the England games and then gradually just got more and more into it I found myself watching all the games and it's become a little routine every day like seven o'clock dinner football's on tv and I can't quite believe how far England have got in it like it's been it's been amazing really it's been crazy I'm still having to like pinch myself now. Like what is the day today? Today's Tuesday. So tomorrow is the semi-final. And it's crazy to say the words, like if England win one more game, then they're in the World Cup final. I mean, is this even life we are in right now? Yeah, that just seems mental. It seems mental to think it. I keep thinking it and I'm just like, wow, that hasn't happened since 1966. Um, not in my lifetime. And I feel like, history is happening right now it feels really surreal and i think if you are quite passionate about football you'll be feeling the same the only thing that's annoying me is like i spend a quite a little bit of time on twitter because i don't know I, I enjoy the debates and conversation on there but i do find it quite depressing at times and there's a lot of negativity on twitter and it's just really annoying me the people who like don't want their country to succeed in the World Cup. Like, I appreciate if you don't like football and stuff, and not everyone does, and, you know, I don't really like Wimbledon. I, I'm not a massive fan of tennis, but I'll watch it. Like, and especially, like, if an English person's playing in it, like, I'll watch it, and I'll support them and stuff. Like, but it's not, like, my favourite sport. But 
I just don't understand this mentality of people online who actively don't want their country to succeed in like a major sporting tournament. Anyway, football chat is coming to a close, but yeah, I'm really excited for the match tomorrow. I just have a major dilemma in that I don't know where to watch it and I feel like I'm becoming a bit superstitious now because every England game I've watched, I've watched on my sofa, in my living room, in my home and I used to love going out and watching England in the pubs and stuff because I haven't felt that into it over the past few years. I thought I'm just going to watch it at home, like I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. But then seeing the scenes of people watching it out and about, I'm just like, oh my God, like it would be amazing to go and watch it somewhere. I've actually entered into a ballot um, to go and watch it in Hyde Park. I think they're putting massive screens up in Hyde Park for tomorrow. So I've entered into a ballot for that, even though I'm still a bit like, where do I even want to watch it? I feel superstitious. So basically I feel like if I don't watch it in my living room on my sofa, then they might not win, which is ridiculous. It doesn't really matter where I watch it, it's down to the team at the end of the day. I feel like this is epic catch-ups at the moment. This is what happens when I don't vlog for like a couple of weeks. So yeah, it's just my, I feel like my life has just been a bubble the past few weeks of like heat wave, football. Um, I have been sucked into Love Island. I didn't want to be, and I've only started watching it since the heat wave. Um, and I do think it's complete rubbish, but, I've been sucked into that. So yeah, that's basically been the bubble of my life the last two weeks. We did have a really nice day out on Friday to Hitchin Lavender Farm, which if you've never been to, I really recommend it. And I'm putting a blog post up this week about it. So go and check out my blog if you wanna read about it and see pictures of it, because it was a really beautiful day out. And even though the sun was really intense and I really didn't wanna go anywhere or do anything, it reached a point last week where I was like, we need to just go out and do something because I'm going mad. And it was so intensely hot there. I was literally sweating the whole time we were there, but it was actually so nice. And yeah, the pictures I got from there were just beautiful and it was a really good day out. So definitely go and check out the blog post on that. Um, in other news, I feel like loads of exciting stuff's happening now. Thursday, in two days time, President Trump, I'm not a fan by no means, um, but he's coming in to land at Statsted Airport in Essex on Thursday. I think Thursday afternoon slash evening, but I think it's actually gonna be more afternoon. Um, and without giving you, you know, my address and exactly where I live, I do live very close to Stansted Airport. And it's quite crazy because we see the planes coming over all the time and the fields where we walk our dogs, like the planes come in really low there and I'm quite excited at the prospect of seeing Air Force One come in and I'm by, I'm by no means a Trump fan, I'm by no means um, a plane spotter, but I think since living where we live, there's a little bit of buzz of excitement with the airport being so close by and stuff and when stuff happens, like we get jets coming over sometimes and it's just quite exciting. So um, me and Andy have been talking about a plan of action. He's much more of a plane spot than I am. Um, he, yeah, he makes a point of going to like the end of the runway sometimes just for something to do. So yeah, we're just trying to work out the best location to go and watch Trump come in and get a good picture or some film clips. So yeah, that's our plan for Thursday, which I'm gonna vlog as well. Today is actually a lot cooler, which is probably why I've picked up my camera. Today, I think it's gone down to like late teens, early 20s. So it's noticeably cooler today. I feel much more human, which is probably why I've picked up my camera. And today, um, I'm gonna finish this epic catch up in a second, um, but today, I found out last night that the RAF, and uh, this is making me sound like such a plane geek. I'm not a plane geek, but I just feel like exciting things are happening this summer and we need to like go out and make the most of it. But today the RAF, I think are celebrating 100 years or something. So they're doing a flyover of Buckingham Palace, but they're actually taking off at Ipswich and flying over Essex down to East London. Um, and I think there's gonna be like 100 different aircrafts or something and it's gonna be epic like people are saying online it's going to be the best air force display ever so 
we didn't really have any plans today i got all of my work done yesterday thankfully so just laying in bed last night i said to andy should we try and go and see it so yeah that is the plan today quite soon actually i need to finish off getting ready i'm gonna drive down there watch that hopefully get some good pictures and videos and yeah then go for lunch so I just wanted to show you some of these um, planty bits I've picked up over the past few days. I saw these socks being advertised on Instagram. They're by a company called Happy Socks. They're about six pounds, which I don't know, is that expensive for a pair of socks? Probably, but I just really love the pattern on these. How much? Six pounds. Six pounds a sock. Well, it's only one pair, it's quite expensive, but they feel really nice quality and I've not seen socks with this gorgeous monstera pattern on before and i also couldn't resist picking up zoella's new like makeup toiletry bag thing from Superdrug, purely because of this pattern which i really love and i quite like the lettering on the front as well sometimes i feel like things like this can be a bit tacky but i actually really like this one also another little thing i just wanted to show you was so this eyeliner was recommended to me by quite a few people it's the stilla um stay all day waterproof liquid liner because i do my kind of makeup look is my winged liquid liner and i was using the kat von d uh tattoo liner which is similar it's like a pen liner basically um and I, I did really like that for a long time i've really liked it and i know a lot of people are boycotting kat von d because she's not going to vaccinate her children but that's a whole nother matter um but the main reason i was looking for a new one was because since i've had really bad hay fever and stuff and my eyes have been really watery the eyeliner was just completely coming off and i've had so many days where i've just thought you know i'm not even going to bother wearing makeup today like if i'm not really doing anything I'm, I'm not phased about not wearing makeup if i'm not really going anywhere or seeing anyone or doing anything important and it's actually been really nice to just not wear it but i wanted something that was going to stay put so a few people recommended this stiller one I've never tried anything from Stiller before. I know they're a cruelty free brand and they've got quite a few vegan friendly products as well. But this one was recommended to me by a few people and I have to say, this is marvelous. Like I've had this on over the heat wave once every now and then and it just hasn't budged at all. Like I've even sat in the sun with it, you know, like when you get squinty eyes and your eyes go a bit watery. I've really put it through its paces and it hasn't come off, it hasn't budged. So so impressed with this um and it's not that difficult to take off like with makeup remover i use a dermalogica special cleansing gel which has no issue in taking this off so i'd really recommend this this is like favorite product of the moment i just wanted to show you this as well um i picked it up from my favorite perrywoods garden center how gorgeous is that it's just like a little basket i think it's like eight pounds and i've just put all my toiletries in it because my toiletries just used to be like kind of sat all out on here but now I've just kind of stood them all in there and it just looks gorgeous I forgot to mention as well I'm just remembering so much stuff now like this video I know it's already going to be long next weekend I am going on a little blogger trip away this is not something that I've been invited to or been paid to go on or anything like that it's literally I've arranged with two blogging friends to go away to Glasgow for the weekend and I feel really excited about it although a little nervous as well because obviously I've had travel anxiety in the past I literally haven't been away without my husband for years I can't I think the last time I went away without my husband was probably 2010 which is crazy I used to go away with friends and other people all the time um but since like five years of that has been consumed with travel anxiety and whatever else so that's probably prevented me from doing anything but yeah i feel like this is quite a milestone in overcoming travel anxiety i do feel nervous about it i definitely feel more nervous than i would if it was just like me and andy going away but at the same time I'm really looking forward to it actually i'm really looking forward to it and we've picked glasgow because we're basically all vegan bloggers and glasgow is from what i hear like just the best place ever for vegan food i thought edinburgh was good i think brighton's amazing but evidently glasgow just pitches all these places to the top of the list so i'm really looking forward to it i had an amazing time when me and andy went to edinburgh a couple of years ago we're there from basically friday morning till sunday evening so we've got a good three days there 
and we're just going to try and go to as many vegan places as possible and we want to go to like the botanical gardens and I really want to see like some of the street art wall murals so I've printed off a little map of that um, if any of you guys watching have been to Glasgow or in Glasgow then comment below and let me know if you have any last minute recommendations for me because that is literally like just under two weeks away now and I'm going to vlog it so you'll get to see what we get up to and I'm also going to do a blog post of all the amazing places to eat vegan in Glasgow so keep an eye out for that. I've just spotted another thing I need to show you. Oh, this isn't just making me look like such a crazy plant lady but I'm just obsessed. This was from Urban Outfitters. So a hot topic of debate this week in uh, the YouTube world of vloggers and well just a hot topic of debate really everywhere especially on Twitter is the Ingham family drama. Um, I just want to say that I first watched an Ingham's video probably earlier this year um, after I heard Zoella talking about them and like plugging them in one of her videos I thought oh, I'll go and see what they're like. I'm not a huge fan of family vloggers anyway because I can see their appeal especially to people who may have families and like young children and stuff. I can definitely see their appeal but I'm not into them because I think it's a bit wrong to maybe especially with like the daily vloggers like the Inghams are to be putting on this kind of facade every single day and shoving a camera in your kid's face every single day and it just seems quite exploitative if that's the word of like their children because there must be days where the kids wake up and actually don't really want to be on film or they must have bad days like we all do but that just doesn't come across in their vlogs at all they're just very like hiya like kids tv presenters and when I first watched one of their videos, the dad, Chris Ingham, I was just like, what on earth? This guy just strikes me as a weirdo. And that's purely based on his looks, which maybe is wrong of me, but he just strikes me as a weirdo. Just everything about him, I said to you, didn't I? Like, this guy is just weird. Like yeah. when I first started watching their videos and I don't watch them religiously, I've kind of dipped in and out over the past year just to kind of see basically. And I've just had a thing in my mind where he just creeps me out. Like there's something really weird about him. And then this past week it's come out that he's been basically sending messages and trying to crack on with like 15, 16 year old girls, if not younger. And this is the weird thing, because they're like a family vlog channel, he gets young girls, like teenagers, if not younger, messaging him on social media and stuff. And like, they're his fans in a way, which is a bit creepy as well. And basically, a few girls have come forward and shared messages and stuff that he sent them. And it's all a bit wrong. It's all a bit like, oh, do you want to meet me at 2 a.m. and we'll go skinny dip in and just like really creepy. Not messages that like someone in their mid 30s should be sending young girls. And then the weird thing is, it's like the Ingham's fans have just been really like not having any of it. They're just like, even though these girls have come forward and said like this man is basically grooming me, like people aren't believing them. And they're like sticking up for him, which I think, you know, if anything, the past few years, what's happened with Jimmy Savile and like the Rochdale scandal and everything else, like now is a time when we should be like believing these girls. And obviously he's innocent until proven guilty, but these girls, their evidence is quite, well, it's there, you know, there is evidence there. And some people are saying they've made it up somehow, but what would they gain from that? I don't really, I don't, I don't know. Like it's this culture that automatically just assumes that someone's lying when they come forward about sexual assault or grooming or anything like that. And that's a massive reason why a lot of girls don't come forward and say anything in the first place because they think that they're not gonna be believed or whatever. And he is someone, he's not celebrity because not everyone knows about him, but he is in a position of power. And these girls are like besotted with him for some reason. So, yeah, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts below. I think, for me, it's the way they've handled it that has been the worst part of all, because really 
weird like really weird they've just kind of carried on vlogging like nothing's happened and he's put a statement out on his twitter which isn't directly from him it sounds like he's from his management or whatever but the first couple of vlogs after the scandal kind of broke were just weird because he wasn't really in them but nothing was being said about it and it's like they're just carrying on as if nothing's happened which I don't think that's right I mean put the camera down for a couple of weeks like take the camera out of your kids face address what's going on like I read something the other day they were saying he's like he went from the camera like you said and then like over the course of like the next couple of days it's just like slowly kind of creeped back in yeah. and taken <laughs> taken like <laughs> taken over again yeah which is interesting that people think that I mean, I, I'm just, whatever. It's but. weird. It's weird. Like the first couple of videos they put up, he wasn't in it at all. But you could tell he was kind of there. Like she'd be vlogging in the car like this, and you could tell he was sat there, but just not saying anything. And then gradually, like he's appeared back in like the background of videos or talking on the camera, but not seeing him. And I think I didn't watch it, but I think the one they put up last night, he was fully in it again. It's and a tough one, isn't it? Because you sort of think, you know, how believable is it? But like you say. You know, you've got to take everything on like face value but it's almost like people why would anyone do that why no would, why would like a 15 16 year old girl there's a lot of youtubers there's a lot of like family channels isn't there and, yeah like, you know nothing's ever happened to those guys before but it is an eye opener that yeah basically like the majority of those people's channels fans are gonna be yeah they're basically kids. like mums and kids which which is fine, you know, like the Sacconi Jolies, they they handle it fine. And I think the weird thing is, is like the messages that the girls put on Twitter from him just sound exactly like him. Like you're reading them and you can just hear him saying that. So I, I, I believe it and I think, I, I don't know, it's just weird that nothing's really happening. Like they're still putting up vlogs. No one, no action seems to be being taken against them. Like... I don't know, the whole thing's just weird. I never normally throw shade at other YouTubers, it's not really my thing, but I think this this situation is particularly interesting. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. So we've just uh, parked up in Stratford Olympic Park. We've got a good spot, we've got over here, we've got that twirly, I don't even know what that is, you know? That twirly building, the Olympic Stadium's there. Um, yeah, we've got a good view as long as we've just kind of pulled up on the side of the road. So as long as no one asks us to move, we should be okay. This lot already. it was over really quickly it was literally like it was so like five fast. minutes or something but we got our first location wrong so we yeah. quickly hopped back in the car and drove like a minute further around the park and then we got a much better view of them but on camera i think it looked a bit pants really i don't know i don't I think, think it looked that look. good right we've arrived at stratford now time to get some lunch i'm absolutely busting for the toilet now and I've got my like cozy clothes on this is the first time I've been able to wear cozy clothes I feel like in forever it feels good and even just having like the windows open there's a breeze today it feels so nice I just wanted to go let you guys know though about something that's helping my dog at the moment excuse my bed it looks like an absolute mess but these two are fine in the heat they're from Mexico not originally but they're breed and they cope really well in the heat this one however doesn't and she has been really struggling in the heat lately. A lot of people cut 
Pom's coats off, but we don't want to do that. And also we were advised by um, a groomer that actually a Pom's coat is designed to keep them cool in summer and hot during the winter. Um, but she has undoubtedly felt really hot. Um, but we don't want to get rid of her coat because it's so beautiful and I'd be really worried that it wouldn't grow back the same. So we got her one of these heat mats just off Amazon. Um, I think it was about £10, if not less than that. And it basically just feels really cool. It's got like a gel in it. I'm not really sure how it works, but when you put your hand on it, you can feel that it just cools you down. So she has that and initially she didn't really want to know it, but now she will actively take herself to go and sit on it. So yeah, that's definitely helped her cool down quite a bit. And also we've got this fan as well. I'm not sure if I feel like I've mentioned this before. Maybe it was on my Instagram stories, but we've got this little Dyson fan that we bought a couple of years ago. And it's basically saved us over the past couple of weeks. We've just had it on like full power. We have it like facing us when we're in bed at night. And it's not like air conditioning, but it's really quite powerful. And it's really helped us to sleep and feel slightly human. Um, so I got a couple of bits today at Stratford. I wasn't intending on buying anything, but I saw a couple of things. I got this leopard print t-shirt from Dorothy Perkins, which I just saw and really like. I thought that would look really nice under like black or blue dungarees. I am a bit of a sucker for leopard print. Um, and I also picked up this nice striped, really kind of oversized, loose fitting t-shirt dress from Monkey. I am a massive fan of Monkey. I really like the quality of their clothes and how their sizes come up and stuff. And I just tried this on and this is really nice. I'm glad I bought this. So I feel like now we're just gonna chill out. We're gonna have a cup of tea. The France-Belgium game's on tonight. So we'll find out who's gonna be in the World Cup final. Um, yeah, that's the plan. We really enjoyed our Wagamamas today. It was really nice. So we're not gonna have any dinner or anything tonight. Um, it's Wednesday, it's the day. Football could be coming home. Well, not just yet, one game away from that, but you know what I'm saying. Um, I've woken up with a nervous feeling in my stomach for England this morning. I think I've pretty much decided that I'm gonna be watching the game in my lucky spot tonight. So yeah, I didn't wanna risk it. Um, so today I'm just having a chilled day at home and just doing some work and I've got some photos to take and some bits and pieces like that. The weather is thankfully cool again, hooray. So we're gonna take the dogs out for a nice little walk in the minute. But I've just had an exciting little delivery and I just wanted to show you guys. It's from a company called The Skinny Bakery and they make lots of kind of healthier treats and cake type things. And um, they messaged me on Instagram and said, would I like to try some of their vegan varieties and of course I said yes why wouldn't I so that's just arrived this morning so I'm just going to open the box and have a little look inside and see what's in it the cat <laughs> just walking all over everything so yeah this is what they're called the skinny bakery this is just turned up and it looks like I've got four different vegan things so what have we got in here skinny chocolate orange pearls oh oh they look really nice they look almost like little muffins 198 calories per pack it's nice that they've got a little vegan stamp of approval on as well chocolate orange is a favorite of mine so yeah i'm looking forward to trying these in a minute oh they've got the official vegan stamp of approval as well that's cool skinny banana shake pearls Oh, so similar little cakey type thing. I guess this is gonna be like banana cake. Oh, they've got like a little bit of cream inside them. These are so cute. I love the branding and everything. Oh, hello. Skinny double chocolate pearls. Oh my God. These look insane. Skinny vanilla bean pearls. So they're all quite similar. They all look like little muffins, basically, with a little bit of cream inside. I didn't really anticipate I'd be waking up this morning and having cake for breakfast, but <laughs> girls gotta do what girls gotta do. So I'm gonna try one of the skinny double chocolate pearls. This is made with tofu and chia. Tofu. Oh, they feel really moist. Mmm. Oh my God. Wow. 
That is really nice. Oh my God, these smell amazing. Let's give this one a whirl. Mmm, that is really nice. It's just like, oh, that is gorgeous. I literally can't eat all of these. Um, but yeah, I'm really impressed. Thanks Skinny Bakery for sending me over these. I think from what I've read on the box as well that you can freeze them, so um, it says I've got to put these immediately in the refrigerator, but on the little card they sent it said that you can actually freeze them, which is good. So if you want to check out their website, just go to www.skinnybakery.co.uk and I think they're Skinny Bakery on Instagram as well. Walk then. I love how optimistic our local pub is. All seven England games. Here's hoping. Okay, it's later on in the day. Um, it's about five o'clock. Football starts in two hours. Today has been weird. It's been like, I've just felt nervous all day. <laughs> I hate that I'm this invested, to be honest. And I just feel like I haven't really been able to get anything done. We popped out to Waitrose earlier, which was pretty boring. I just had to get cat food. We went and got the car washed. Then we've come back and I've taken some pictures and done some work. And now I just feel like I'm floating around with this nervous bellyache. It's horrible. The sky's a bit bluer than it was earlier as well. It's just a nice temperature at the moment. It's like 21, 22 degrees and it's not boiling, but it's just nice. Are you being a good girl? Are you being a good girl? You are, aren't you? Yes. And he's serving up the vegan bolognese tonight. I always like to have a bit of brown sauce on my bolognese. It's just how it is. If you like the look of this, then the recipe for it is on my blog. And our favorite vegan mince is the Ocado one. One nil at half time. I feel like I'm sweating out of every area of my body right now. It's now one all, extra time. We are not coping. Bad times. I thought we were imagined we'd get. I always said before the tournament, England never overachieved, his team have overachieved, getting to a semi final. Good morning, everyone. So last night didn't go to plan. Um, I almost feel hungover today, like I didn't even drink last night, but I feel hungover from like the adrenaline. Yeah, massive shame, England knocked out in extra time. But do you know what? I didn't end up feeling that bad because I think um, the team and Gareth Southgate have done this country proud and I really do think they deserve like a hero's welcome home to get that far and the way they played and their sportsmanship and everything. Um, it was just commendable so it would have been amazing to see them get to the World Cup final there's no denying but it wasn't meant to be I've woke up this morning a bit late and Andy has been listening in on his radio to see when Trump is landing at Stansted and it's literally in like half an hour's time so I think we're gonna set off in a minute with our cameras and see if we can spot him coming in I think we're going to go in Andy's electric car, the Twizzy, which I haven't been in before. Um, you can fit someone in the back, but whether I'm going to fit or not is another question. This is what I'm going to try and fit in the back of. Somehow I made it into the back. I'm not going to say it's comfortable. <laughs> Thank you. 